There are tons of people without technical backgrounds that have had success in tech sales. But I also see a lot of people that think that their lack of a technical background should stop them from even looking at the career altogether. So I wanna make a video today giving you five things to think about if you don't have a technical background. And I definitely don't wanna paint the picture that anybody can do tech sales. But again, I do think there's so many people that don't realize that a technical background isn't always necessary to really succeed in tech sales. And if you remember nothing else from this video, the first point that I wanna to make today is literally go on LinkedIn and look at a company like Oracle or other big sales companies that are in the tech world, Google, Amazon, et cetera. And I guarantee you that if you look at their SDRs, if you look at their account executives, there's many individuals, arguably probably 50% or more that don't have a strictly technical or engineering background. And again, I would say that it's important to remember that they're usually very capable individuals who are still working hard, but I've seen former teachers, I've seen people with communication degrees straight out of college, I've seen former athletes, I am one myself, that transitioned into tech sales and ultimately after a few months of training, were able to sell a highly complex tool without knowing the ins and outs of the lower level code. And this is a really great segue into my second point, which is actually knowing code can in many cases be a hindrance and actually take away from your ability to actually sell something well. And while this could be an entire video in of itself, what I mean is that oftentimes I, as a former engineer, even early on in my career in a direct sales role, often made mistakes by going too deep technically and thus losing picture of the broader business value of the product. I'll give you a real example from my own career. I was on a call with the CTO of one of the largest pizza chains in the world that you would absolutely recognize pretty much if you live anywhere. And we got talking, they're going through a massive cloud adoption, they're migrating a lot of old systems to a new technology, et cetera. And instead of focusing on those high level value propositions, all of the work that they needed to do, all of the engineering resources that were required, the teams that they had to create, the people they were hiring, the tools they had to adopt, we sat there and started speaking about a very specific feature on our platform that at the end of that seven minute segue wasn't even relevant to what they were doing because it was way too far in advance. They were at the early stages of this evaluation and we didn't even go out of our way to try and align to the business value and show them how our tool would help them adopt the cloud faster. It would reduce the amount that their teams needed to learn from a new tooling perspective and it would allow them to accomplish much more with less. And had we actually dove into that use case, had we actually gone into their needs around this broader migration, how much money they had allocated towards the project, their expectations, the metrics of success, if we had spent our time there and not the lower level code, we probably would have had a much more engaging conversation and taken the deal much further than it ultimately went. And lastly, I'd also add, you know, obviously there's stereotypes around engineers being antisocial people, being weird introverts. And I mean, there's always a case and there's always a stereotype that may fit that, right? But even so, I'm not here to say again that the most energetic and friendly person is great at tech sales because a very busy developer who you interrupt, a very busy engineering manager, VP of engineering, they don't wanna be schmoozed. They don't wanna hear you talk about how their day was etc cetera, etc cetera, right and so my point being is don't be naive and think that you have a lot of energy and optimism and people are going to buy into that they want to know how you're solving their problem but i just add again if you have the aptitude to carry a conversation if you have the aptitude to understand business value if you have the ability to ask intelligent questions and listen that is more important than knowing the lower level features or code of a product right away the job that's interviewing you is not going to expect you not being an engineer to know the ins and outs of the code. But if you come into an interview and you know the problem that they solve for, you know the types of customers that they work with, you can learn the most important technical features as you onboard in the job. And that's the expectation from the employers. So don't expect that you have to know everything, but also conversely, don't take that as a sign that you don't have to know anything, right? Put in the work, study the company. And if you have questions, that's fine as well. But I digress, that could be a separate video in of itself. And so my third point in this video is that in addition to, I think a lot of people who count themselves out because they don't have a technical background, I also think there's a lot of people who don't realize how valuable their non-tech experience is in a tech sales role. And I'll give you an example without naming names. Someone in my family is a former teacher now directly in a tech sales role for a company that sells education tech to other schools. I see so many people that are in finance, in accounting, in education, in athletics, in so many different fields. And these are all valuable experiences that you can tie to technology. If you are an accountant that wants to go into tech sales, if you are in digital marketing, do you know how many digital marketing platforms there are? How many fintech companies are trying to sell secure financial platforms to large banks? 
If you are a potential end user and or you know the industry lingo, it doesn't matter that you don't know the lines of code that make this fintech company's tool work. The fact that you know how to speak to a CFO, the fact that you know how to speak to a VP of accounting and relevant roles within that industry is I would argue way more valuable than actually knowing the lower level lines of code and the lower level technical features that you can learn once you're in that role. And again, the reason I'm particularly passionate about this one is I coach so many people that undervalue that experience they have and aren't even able to ask themselves, if I was buying this tool, what value could I provide? Or also when you're looking to break into tech sales, like I said, if you have that finance background as an example, don't look at any and every tech company, focus your efforts on all the financial companies and you'll find that you rapidly are able to understand their products because you're focused on a specific vertical and you have that industry experience that you can bring in and immediately be valuable when you're interacting with potential customers. The last two points I have on this video, I admit are more on the philosophical level of the job. But I think the fourth one, and very importantly, is many of you who have been watching my channel probably know this, but technical sales is not anything like it's portrayed in movies, anything like you've seen in car salespeople, anything like you've seen if you've ever been approached by someone at a retail store trying to sell you a credit card or whatever it might be, right? It is very consultative in nature, and in almost every single case, I am always listening more than I am talking. And again, it's not this easy. You have to put in work to prepare yourself to break in. But in interviews, I've seen so many cases where I've been leading interviews for SDRs myself. And I've seen so many people that come from other sales jobs that weren't tech sales. They come from other car sales jobs or whatever it might be. And they think that they need to talk about all the great features and tell you how amazing everything is. And so much of tech sales is actually reaching out to a customer because they may be a fit for what you're doing and you trying to uncover if they actually have pain associated with the problems that your tool solves. So, so much of it is listening. So much of it is being able to drive a conversation in the sense that you can ask questions to uncover what the prospect is doing as opposed to telling them, hey, we have this great tool. You should try it out, right? Lastly, again, I would imagine if you've made it this far in the video, my fifth point would probably be for you, which is like, even in my case, right? I've been in tech sales for four years now. I was in an engineering role and kind of got a lot of exposure to sales there. Even after getting that experience and probably thinking that sales was the right move for me, even a couple months into the job, I was still not 100% sure. I was still nervous that I wouldn't make it long-term. I was still nervous that I wouldn't be able to promote within the profession. And I think that's just something you shouldn't avoid at all. You're never gonna 100% know the career is for you until you get yourself in interviews, until you get yourself actually in the job. And I think so many people I work with, so many people on this channel that I've seen ask me questions, which I appreciate by the way, keep them coming. But so many people are trying to think their way, is this for me? I have to think about it more. I have to understand if this is for me. And if you have a desire to do it, if you have a desire to try it, put yourself in that situation. Get interviews now. Start studying tech companies that you want to apply for and have really targeted outreach to managers. Get in those interviews and guess what? I mean, it's not ideal, but if you don't like it, if you're not sure by the end of that interview process that you want to try it, you can always keep doing what you're doing and turn down offers. But I think I see so many people get so heady and like, oh, I need to know this or what if I do this? Maybe I should do this before I apply. Maybe I should do this. And yeah, study up a little bit, get an understanding, but you have to put yourself out there and you have to get yourself in interviews, get yourself in the role for a year or two before you can really make an assessment on if it is the path you wanna take long-term. So again, just recapping a few things, right? If you don't know tech, that's totally fine. What advantage can you bring to that company? Do you have a unique background? Did you play sports? Are you in an industry that that company would actually sell to? Have you interacted with the types of people that that company sells to on a daily basis? If you don't know the tech, that's fine. But like I said, in the example of say accounting, if you're selling a financial software to accountants and you were an accountant before, that's a huge advantage. That's way more important than knowing the tech. And like I said, I've got many other videos on this as well, so I won't belabor on this point too long, but sales again is much more consultative in the tech world. You're uncovering and driving complex conversations around huge problems that are driving very positive outcomes, ultimately related to the revenue of the business. And I think so many people get lost in worrying about if I don't know this code, I'm gonna make myself look like a fool or all of these different things, right? When you're in the role, if you're asked questions that you don't know, it's totally fine to delegate. You have sales engineers at your disposal. 
you have other team members. Prospects as well will appreciate the fact that you wanna wait until you give them a correct answer as opposed to just saying, uh, yeah, we can do that and just make it up as you go, right? If anything, don't be naive. It's not just because you're an energetic and enthusiastic person that you can be in tech sales. It takes a lot of work. If you're watching these videos, I hope you're getting closer and closer to that goal. But again, you've gotta get yourself out there. You're never gonna know if you've been thinking about this for more than four to six months and you haven't done anything, you really have to get out there. You have to get rejected. You have to put your applications out there, network with other people that are breaking in to help continue to compound the knowledge that you've gained thus far, but you're never gonna know 100%. And even now, right, when I'm talking to CTOs of some of the biggest brands in the world, when I'm talking to CEOs, when I'm talking to developers that have been making software Software for mission critical platforms for 20 plus years and I've only worked just under a decade and I've only been in sales for just three years and I've only sold this specific product for one, yeah, it can be nerve wracking at times because those engineers are in a position to tell you what's what. You don't know anywhere near the depth. But what's important in sales is that you are able to align the problem that you're solving and the problem that a customer is actually experiencing to a very positive business outcome that ultimately relates to revenue and that manifests its way in many different forms depending on what you're selling. But if you have questions, feel free to fire away below. I'm happy to answer your questions. And again, would just encourage you to get out there and don't let the fact that you don't have a tech background stop you from trying to break into the career. It is definitely possible if you put in the work. But we will see you in our next video. And as always, appreciate the time.